about this more. News Nation travel editor Peter Greenberg is with us now. Peter, we also figured, you know, if anybody had any tips and tricks, it would be you, sir. So do you have any travel hacks to get around this so-called calculated misery, or are we just beholden to the airlines for the rest of our lives? Well, it gets down to full disclosure and something called taxes. The reason why the airlines have made so much money from fees is because airline tickets are taxed at a very high federal tax rate. So let's say it's a $100 ticket. The airlines may only net about $38 out of that. The rest of it goes to taxes. However, if they charge you a fee for a bag, or for a different kind of a or different seat. That's not an airfare. That's a fee, and that's only taxed at local state tax revenues, which means that that $100 fee nets the airlines about $93. So the, the airlines may be transparent on their rates. They're not being transparent on their values, and people who go online to book not necessarily always see those fees, and there's your problem. We get attracted by the low fee, or excuse me, the low fare, and end up ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Yeah. So, the bottom line is understand why airlines make that money and how they do it. So you have an airline like Spirit that has these promotional fares for $20, yep. but the bags are going to cost you 100 Yeah, yeah. They're, they they're, they penny pinch you uh, in other ways, too, or, or gouge you in other ways, I, sh I guess I should say. There are a lot of things we now pay for that generally used to be free. You know, you, you just pointed out a few. The airlines have essentially created all these various micro classes aboard the plane now. Uh, these airlines raked in $4.2 billion in revenue on assigned seat fees in 2022, another $5.3 billion on baggage fees. Uh, do you think that we could start seeing these increasing fees turn customers away or no, because we all need to fly and get places? We're dealing with the world of oligopoly. The airlines figure you're gonna have to fly them sooner or later anyway. We don't have much of a choice when you only have four major airlines. That's one problem. But there's other something called code sharing. And here's an interesting area when it comes to airfares. Just this morning, I priced out a one-way coach airfare from London to New York. You know, excuse me, London to Los Angeles. It came out at $2,600 on British. But wait a second. I then looked at an, a, a website for Iberia. That's a code share partner with British Airways. This it was a different flight number, but it was the exact same plane on the exact same date and time flying the exact same route. That fare was $700, exact same plane. So you need to have more choice. Don't just go with the first quote that you see. Find out which airline partners they have at code share it and look to see what inventory they have because airlines carry different inventories for the exact same plane. Yeah, about $2,000 difference. That's stark. Uh, also, Peter, I wanted your take on, you know, speaking of, of seats, last week United said it was changing the way it's boarding its flights, uh, prioritizing window seats. They're going to board first now, then middle, then you've got the aisle. Um, does that get the Peter Greenberg seal of approval? And what kind of impact do you expect this to have? I'll give you a qualified interesting, and I'll tell you why I say that because there are still like 10 different boarding groups that most airlines have. And if you take a look at the way they break down the boarding groups, even if you're gonna be boarding from the window first to the middle to the aisle, other people have priority. So for example, they board people with disabilities first, we support that. They board people who are still active military, we support that. And then it gets a little silly. The way they should really define it, forget window, middle and aisle. How about this? People who have personality disorders, people who've taken their meds, people who haven't taken their meds, people who could lash out at you at any minute. That actually makes more sense than the window to aisle because if you have people who have priority or people flying as families, which they all get to board together, that defeats the entire window middle aisle idea. It's a great idea in operation. I have some questions. Yeah, I actually, I, I was boarding a, a flight. This was several weeks ago and I heard a, a couple of women in front of me talk about they had just told the airline that they had anxiety so that they could get on uh, quicker, but they didn't actually have it, um, and so we're seeing a lot. You, of, we're seeing you, a lot of that, right? The biggest, absolutely, uh, yeah. the biggest scam of all is what we call miracle flights. Anybody can ask for a wheelchair. Nobody questions your 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 physical condition. And if you get the wheelchair, you get to go to the counter first. You get to go through security first, and you get to board first. Why do we call these miracle flights? Because when the plane lands, everybody can suddenly walk. In fact, yeah. they can run. And, and we need to have a better idea of how we approach this. And, and who really needs help, people, right? Exactly, yeah. people who abuse the system. Peter Greenberg, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you for breaking down this calculated misery. We want to talk about calculated happiness next time. Let's see, what, let's see if we can make that happen. I'll do that. We'll see you soon.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.